um, again, I'm Tuesday Sigmund, and uh, we're from Counseling and Disability Services, and we've got um, our counseling team here with us today. We hope that you were able to stop by and pick up a self-care package um, in preparation for our workshop today. We thought that it would be a really good time. Um, self-care, there's always a good time for self-care, but um, with the extra stressors that everyone is going through right now, we thought the topic of self-care in our What's Next series um, would be great placed right along near Valentine's Day. So I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Miss Stella Perrin. Hey everybody, good afternoon. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, so what is self-care? Self-care is any activity we do that um, intentionally or deliberately takes care of our mental, emotional, and physical health. Um, so we're not just talking about taking care of our bodies, but we're talking about taking care of our whole self. Although it is a simple concept, um, sometimes it's easy to overlook. We get busy and we don't take care of ourselves like we need to, and then we feel the effects. So good self-care is the key to improved mood and reduced anxiety. And I don't know about you, but um, over the last year or so, I have um, noticed in myself more anxiety. And so I'm talking to myself today as well. And I don't like to experience anxiety. So um, part of that is learning to also, for us to learn to take care of ourselves. It's a key concept um, to having good relationships with ourselves and with others. So part of self-care is um, nutrition. Some of the things I wanted to um, point out to you in terms of self-care and the food that we eat, healthy eating keeps our energy high. I don't know about you, but there are days where I just don't feel like I have any energy. And then when I think back, I either haven't eaten or I haven't eaten well. A balanced diet with lots of protein. Of course, we can get protein in meats and um, things like nuts. Um, a lot of beans and lentils, those kinds of things have protein, whole grains, fruits, and veggies. Um, it's sometimes hard to eat a big meal, especially during the day when you're busy. So eat small, frequent meals to sustain your energy. And avoid crash diets um, if you're trying to lose weight. And being at a healthy weight is part of feeling good. A sensible goal is to lose about a half to one pound a week by just reducing your calories. And even if you'll just reduce your sugar intake, I think you'll find that um, it's a lot easier to lose the weight that you want to lose. So if you cut your diet by about 250 to 500 calories a day, which is basically one Coke um, a day, and incorporate regular exercise, you'll find that you're meeting those goals. But your body needs good calories. For energy. So we're not telling you um, not to have caffeine in self-care. Um, I have my Diet Coke beside me, but use caffeine your advantage. Um, caffeine, of course, gives us energy. It's um, an upper, but limit caffeine before um, bedtime is important, especially um, it can interrupt your sleep if you have it too late in the day. But having a cup of coffee or a soda before class is okay. It can give you a boost that you need. Limit your alcohol. Alcohol is a depressant, a sedative. It actually makes you tired and can actually depress your mood. Drink lots of water. Your body is made up mostly of water. Um, water is essential to carry in nutrients throughout your body and take away waste. Um, so it's important that throughout the day that you drink plenty of water. Are you hungry? Um, we want to make sure that you know that there are free snacks available um, in the lower level of um, the E-building, room, beside room E21, beside um, 
Kim Lackey's office. We have free snacks for you. So if you find that you've forgotten your lunch or whatever, please stop by there and grab a free snack because we want you to have the energy you need to get through the day. And I'm going to interject too, if you happen to be on the Watauga campus, um, Diane Mazza, our, our um, coordinator of student activities up there also has those same free snacks available if you're on, on our Boone campus. And I would let you know too that um, if regular access to food is difficult for you, um, we are aware of food pantries and would love to hook you up with a food pantry that could get you groceries. Um, just come see us confidentially or send us an email and we would be glad. Um, and please share that information with friends because we want to make sure that everybody has um, the food that they need um, so they can stay healthy and have a successful semester. All right, the benefits of exercise. Exercise is so important in self-care. And I'm not talking about preparing for a marathon or anything like that. Um, but what do we get out of exercise? Exercise can enhance our mood. And I don't know about you, but I like to feel good. Um, so exercising just five minutes can start to improve your mood. Within five minutes of physical activities, individuals can notice your mood is improving. It can help alleviate mild to moderate long-term depression. Exercise can help release stress and increase relaxation. And regular exercise has been shown to reduce symptoms of anxiety and boost your energy. Exercise improves your health. It decreases your blood pressure and your heart rate. It controls your weight, strengthens your muscles, and enhances your immunity. And of course, immunity right now is really important um, to try to stay healthy. So we hope that you'll do that. Um, exercise can also increase your ability to sleep and have a more restful sleep. And I would have a note down at the bottom. Down at the bottom Find something you like to do. Um, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be running or something that you just absolutely dread. Find exercise that you enjoy. Um, get a friend to do it with you. Take a walk around campus or um, meet somebody at a park and walk or bike through a park, whatever it is that you find enjoyable because you're a lot more likely to stick with exercise if you're doing something that you enjoy doing and if you're doing it with somebody else. All right, so um, kind of going off the um, tips that Stella was talking about, one thing um, that comes up a lot when you're talking about self-care um, is um, sleep hygiene. So that's kind of a term that's come up a lot um, in, recent dialogue. So um, kind of the question is, you hear the word sleep or you hear about sleep hygiene, so what is it? So um, sleep hygiene is um, the process of creating an environment and a daily routine that promotes like, consistent, uninterrupted sleep. Um, so it's just referring to those, um, to those helpful strategies and routines that you can put together. So kind of going off of that, we're talking about why does sleep hygiene come up when you're talking about self-care? Um, because sleep is important. So, um, so why is sleep important? So one of the main things um, is that um, healthy sleep, um, it's important for maintaining both physical and mental health. Um, sleep is how your body recharges and repairs um, your body cells um, each day. Um, it's how it's how you recharge so you feel energized for the next day. Um, and one other thing is that um, you know a lack of good quality sleep is also um, linked with a number of negative like physical and mental health outcomes. Um, so there's a link between um, 
poor quality sleep and things like, um, like cardiovascular disease, um, depression, diabetes, um, those things. Um, and also just um, in general, uh, I know for me when I don't have a whole lot of sleep, the next day I'm tired, I'm irritable, I notice that I'm a little short with other people. So that lack of sleep can kind of enter into have an impact on like your personal relationships with yourself and with other people whether that's like friends or family um, significant other kids those type of things um, so um, so I want to talk about what are some strategies for maintaining sleep hygiene um, so one of those one thing that I do want to point out is that it's not an all or nothing because um, when you research sleep hygiene you usually get these big long lists of these are tips that you should follow so it's not a one size fits all um, you can start by just choosing one thing that you feel that you can manage um, in order to create that kind of healthy routine um, but some of the um, tips um, that come up um, as far as maintaining the sleep hygiene um, is that being consistent. So um, setting a schedule for going to sleep and waking up each day. Um, and it's usually recommended, um, the CDC recommends for adults seven hours of sleep. So if it's possible, setting a time to go to sleep and wake up, that gives you somewhere in that range uh, with the amount of sleep. Um, before going to sleep, exploring methods of relaxation. Because um, we've all probably experienced times where your mind is racing or you're really tense about something and it makes it hard to go to sleep. So finding a bedtime routine that is kind of relaxing so you're ready to wind down at night. Um, and some things are like meditations, mindfulness, um, paced breathing, um, and there are apps um, that can take you through like mindfulness exercises that you can download um, if that's something that you're interested in exploring. So it makes it really easy um, to kind of get into it. So it's not so intimidating. Um, kind of going off what Stella was talking about, regular exercise um, is also helpful in getting a good night's sleep, um, avoiding caffeine and heavy meals later. Um, in the evening. Um, if you drink a big old cup of coffee or a big gulp or Slurpee at 11 o'clock at night, all that sugar and energy is, you're going to be bouncing off the wall. So it'll be hard to, to get settled down to sleep. Um, so if you do feel hungry later in the evening, just something like a light snack um, is usually a better option than a big heavy meal. Um, and then kind of talking about your sleeping environment, that's really important as well. So trying to do things like blocking out light or drowning out noises and putting your room at a comfortable temperature. Um, those can have big impacts because if you're just drenched in sweat in the middle of the night, that's going to wake you up. If you're freezing, that's going to wake you up as well. Um, and some things that you can do, I know, um, like having your cell phone is a big thing. I'm glued to my cell phone pretty much 24 seven, uh, but the blue light from your cell phone can disrupt your sleep. So trying to do things like 30 minutes before you go to sleep, turn off or put down your um, electronic devices um, can be helpful or notifications from your phone can be disruptive. So um, doing things like setting it on do not disturb or where only certain contacts can get in touch with you. Um, Cause I know I always wanna make sure I'm available in case an emergency comes up with my family. Um, so you can, as Tuesday has um, talked about before, you can put settings on your phones where you can still have contact from um, like family in those cases. Um, so this isn't an exhaustive list. Um, at the bottom there, um, we have some links that you can go to to kind of research a little bit more about sleep hygiene. And like you said, it's not one size fits all. So some of these strategies may work better for you than others. And, um, and you don't have to do all of them at once. You can just start with one, um, whatever is the easiest for you to start with um, and see how that 
helps. Thank you, Stella and J Jalen. Um, those are some great tips about um, our bodies and our minds and helping with, with sleep and exercise and healthy eating. I want to focus just a little bit on self-talk. Um, we all have an inner voice. So it's, if you, you may have uh, remember like a cartoon that has a, um, a good person on one side of someone's shoulder and a bad person on the other side. And I think the cartoon um, developers were really getting at, we all have this inner voice. Um, sometimes our inner voice can really be helpful at motivating us to reach our goals. It helps remind us, hey, you need to do that thing that you told your mom or your dad or your sister <laughs> that you were going to do today. Um, it helps us to remember to do our schoolwork or to complete work tasks. Um, tells us to make sure that we, you know, get up in the morning at a certain time. It also can reassure us when we're doing something well. Um, it reminds us when we need to eat well and exercise. But sometimes our inner voice is not that, um, that good person on the one side of our shoulder. Sometimes it becomes um, excessively negative, um, and we really call that negative self-talk. Negative self-talk is really just the this, this same thing. It's that inner dialogue that you're having with yourself that may um, start to limit your ability to believe in yourself, your abilities, and your goals. Um, it, it really can be very damaging to us in a physical, mental, uh, spiritual, uh, holistic way. It increases our levels of stress. Um, Jalen and Stella talked about how, you know, increased anxiety, it can lower our, our self-esteem. Again, we're saying really negative things to ourselves internally. And um, you can see on the little picture here, this fella is like, no, I can't, no, I can't, and yes, I can. That's kind of that back and forth that sometimes people will feel um, their inner self um, struggling with. It decreases our motivation to where we're just, we just don't want to um, do anything because we feel kind of helpless or stuck. Like we've all had the experience of where we just kind of feel stuck and, and sometimes that negative voice will chime right in and reiterate that stuck feeling for us. It can lead to um, mental health problems like depression and anxiety I already mentioned and also some mental distress. So we really have to combat our negative self-talk. So how in the world do we do that? Um, it, it's, it's not easy, I'll be honest with you. We all struggle with self-talk, whether it's positive or negative throughout our entire life. Um, but you gotta catch yourself when you're being critical of yourself. And sometimes it can um, transpose onto others, you know, where we are now um, kind of critical or cynical and um, it not only is impacting us, but it's impacting other people. So what do I mean by catching yourself? Um, it means when you have those negative thoughts, you have to be like, oh, I'm having a negative thought. That takes a lot of energy. Um, it's, it's not in our nature to just recognize when we're thinking negative things or even when we're thinking positive things. But you have to catch yourself doing it so that you can replace the bad with some good. Um, Cross-examine your inner critic. You know, why is he or she there? Why, why are they saying these things to you? Um, just so that you can understand that a little bit more. Talk it out with a counselor. Sometimes we need to, you know, talk things out, um, even with a friend or someone we're really comfortable with. Um, to, to better understand, you know, why, why am I thinking this way? When you're um, having your negative self-talk, when you're catching yourself, think about it like if you were a friend or a loved one. Would you say those things that you say to yourself, to a friend or a loved one? Your answer is probably no. If you say to yourself, oh gosh, you know, I made a C on that exam. I, I should have put in more study time. I, I should have done this, I should have done that. I'm just so stupid or ignorant or foolish. I could have done these other things. You would never say that to a friend or a loved one who came up to you and they said, man, I made a C on this exam. You're gonna say, that's all right. You know, you're gonna turn around. 
What can you do next time to do better? So think about it that way. You would, you would never say those things to someone that you care about. So why are you saying them to yourself? Um, a really fun way to catch yourself and to shift your perspective is by giving your inner critic a nickname. So it's, it's easy for me um, because I'm, um, my, I'm named after a day of the week. So my, you know, my name's Tuesday. So for me, my inner critic, I call her Monday. Man, you're being such a Monday. What is up with you? <laughs> um, but there's a way to do that and, and flip that inner critic so that it can become almost like a, a game, so to speak, that you're practicing um, how to change that self-talk. And, and really just practicing that self-kindness is something that we all should be doing. And that involves self-care. Um, taking the time to care for yourself is not selfish. Um, it's really important because we're going to help others in that process. There are benefits to positive self-talk, of course. We saw kind of the effects of it. It does lower our levels of distress. It um, makes us have a po more positive outlook. Uh, we usually are more um, able to cope in hardships or times of stressors because we have a more positive outlook on life. It has been known to increase lifespan and of course it improves self-esteem because you're telling yourself more positive things than negative. Again, I want you all to know that this takes practice and it takes time. I, I may be doing really good about my positive self-talk and catching my inner critic and um, one day and then the next day, you know, you just don't do it. But it does take practice um, and intentionality. And that's, that's really a key piece to any of the things that we're talking about with self-care is that um, it takes intentionality. It takes you making it a priority I've already said this once, but self-care is not selfish. It's really smart. Um, and how you make it a priority is by setting your boundaries, finding a purpose, and making goals that are um, smart. You can see here smart goals, uh, smart for you to be able to achieve them. So if you're not familiar with smart goals, um, they're specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So how can this really be helpful in creating your self plan is a lot of us may say, oh, you know what, sleep hygiene, that's definitely something I want to start to practice. Well, if you just say, I'm just gonna practice good sleep hygiene, that's not really a smart goal and it's gonna be hard for you to achieve that um, because it's not specific, measurable, achievable, um, relevant, or time bound. So another way that you could say that is being real specific. Okay, I'm gonna download this app, and it's you know, whatever app it is, and then I'm gonna actually use this app to help me measure my sleep, and I'm gonna turn my phone notifications off so that way they're not disturbing me, and I'm gonna um, see if I can do this for a week and see if I notice any changes. So again, you've got a time-bound, um, SMART goal. I'll give you an example about SMART goals and myself. I um, used to be an avid um, sun drop drinker and I decided at some point that I, I didn't want to, to drink sun drops anymore and I'll, I'll tell you the reason for that is because I was on my way somewhere with my daughter and we were already late for whatever place we were going to. And I said, but wait, we gotta stop at the store and I gotta get my sun drop before we go. And she looked at me and said, really, you're, we're already late, mom. Like you're, you're putting this above like us getting there, you know, <laughs> in a reasonable amount of time. And I thought to myself, yeah, this is really impacting not only me and my body and I don't feel that great, and I want to make this change, but now it's impacting my, my family. Um, so I really had to set a SMART goal, and I was able to complete that goal. And then this thing called a global pandemic happened, and um, I reverted back to that being like a coping mechanism for me. And so I was back to drinking my sun drops. Um, and so now I think I'm on like day... I don't, I think 35 or 36 of not having a soda. 
Um, but I had to set that SMART goal um, that I could I could do that. And so I made the goal for 30 days. And so now I'm, I'm past that and it's just kind of routine or maintenance. So that's the same thing with all of the self-care that we're talking about is that you have to um, really take the time and invest in in yourself and, and what you want to see as improvement. Just as a quick review, you've heard that self-care is really just about improving yourself. Um, I want you all to hear that it doesn't have to be complicated. You may hear things like, oh, have a spa day or take a bath. You know, it, it's self-care is not meant to be expensive. You don't have to have um, luxurious pedicures to make yourself feel better. It really just starts with simple changes. Um, like uh, Jalen and Stella and I have mentioned today, but it does have to be practice. You're the, really the only person who can watch over your own well-being, and you deserve to have somebody watching over that. And you can really bring out your best self with the use of some self-care strategies. We just focus on a few today that we're passionate <clears throat> about, but there are a lot more self-care avenues um, and options for you. <clears throat> Michelle Obama is quoted as saying that we need to do a better job of putting ourselves higher on our own to-do list. And I couldn't say it better myself. Um, in doing that, you know, we are here for you at CCCNTI. These are your counseling staff. Um, Jalen, of course, and Stella are with me today. I'm Tuesday. Our executive director, Shannon Brown, is also has a counseling background. And there's Charity Tennant there. Um, she's our administrative assistant who helps with appointments and, and getting you connected with us if, if we're not available. On the Caldwell campus, we're in F Building near uh, Career Connections. You can always just uh, sign in in the virtual lobby and, and we'll come out and get you. Um, and on the Watauga campus in the Student Services Building, um, our counselor position on the Watauga campus is we're currently in the hiring process of that position. And so myself and Shannon Brown are coming up um, up to the Watauga campus uh, once a week. And then, of course, we're, we're coming up as needed for students as well. <clears throat> 